so Jimmy and I, we're smoking and joining on the center part of Wimbledon. <laughs> what he stole my line. I mean, it's, oh God, it's incredible they be here. Judging, uh, it's safe to say, judging by tonight, that I think Jimmy probably had more friends and more fans than anyone I know. And I'm proud to say I was a friend of his. The guy always had a twinkle in his eye. He always had a smile on his face. He always seemed to be having such a damn fucking good time. <laughs> He'd come up to me and he'd say, look, John, I just spoke to my Uncle Warren. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but he got me convinced they were related. Because <laughs> they were both so damn smart. What the fuck so I'm hoping they're going to give me some investment advice. But actually, Jimmy would end up saying, could... He came to a couple of my matches. He'd say, relax, man. You're too fucking wound up. <laughs> and of course he was right. So about the last 15, 20 years since I've been around Jimmy, I've tried to live by his credo. If Cameron, you're out there, he came up to me years ago. He said, hey, listen, my son playing a little tennis. Can you... Take a look at it. <laughs> Stick to singing. Um, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, Cameron. If you're there, love you. I mean, <laughs> one of the greatest guys I've ever met is Jimmy Buffett, and I'm glad that I'm here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> I'd now like to welcome the world-class, worldwide entertainer, <laughs> Mr. 305. Just shoot it. Bam, 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 bam. They can't. They go to. They never will. Stop the fire. 